Self-defense techniques don't work. Martial arts weapons, episode number two. We're talking about Kali martial arts, also known as Eskrima and Arnis, all in the Filipino martial arts family, or FMA. Now, Filipino martial arts, Eskrima, Arnis, Kali, Salat, uh, Doce Perez, all of those have way more to do than with just the stick. That, the stick is just a small part of it. It's, it's a big part of it, but it's not the only thing. You talk about knives, you talk about a lot of open hand or empty hand techniques a lot of grappling. There's a, it's a vast, very robust system, Filipino martial arts. And I'm a big fan, huge fan. And I'm not a master. I'm not a guru. I'm not at the highest level. I know what I know, and I know how to use it for self-defense. I have fallen in love with using sticks for self-defense because they're so practical and they're just about everywhere. Now, martial arts weapons used the right way are still very effective. I don't care what weapon it is, and anything can be turned into a weapon, right? It all starts here. It starts with how you use it, what you know about it. But we're talking about Kali martial arts sticks when we talk about self-defense techniques don't work. You see it all the time. Martial arts fails. You have all these goofy, goofy goofball martial artists out there doing death touch and big heavy set people doing horrible, horrible versions of martial arts. But then you also see the other side of it. You'll see some pretty smooth, cool looking stuff. I'm gonna give myself a little bit bigger room to work here. I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna tell you why I've got the cane out. Today is the 15th. I pulled a name out of the hat for the two-piece bow. And I'm happy to say it's already in the mail. It's being shipped to the winner. And I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't want anybody to bother that person. But congratulations and thank you for everybody who entered. Now this month, from now until May 15th, I will be giving away this lightweight, extremely durable, rattan training walking cane. You can use it as a walking cane if you need to, but you can also learn how to defend yourself with a stick and a hook on it. All practical self-defense techniques that actually do work. And I'm gonna be giving this away in a drawing on the 15th of May. I did the drawing this morning. I put the names in the hat of everybody who has joined here on YouTube and I say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for joining as a member. This helps keep this channel going. Or if you joined on Patreon and you're helping keep this channel going. Or if you weren't able to financially support, which is totally fine, your eyeballs are enough, training with me is enough, and you sent me an email or you went to the contact box on pasquinelli.com, that's the most surefire way to contact me. Go to pasquinelli.com, P-A-S-Q-U-I-N-I-L-L-I.com. Put your name in the contact box, say, hey, I wanna be entered for the cane. And I'm gonna be drawing that in a month. And I'm gonna send it away my cost to somebody who is a virtual member. Mer virtual member, the Quantum Martial Arts Dojo. Virtual, yeah. And I, yeah, straight canes are fine. But if you wanna enter or win this, I'd love to send it to you. Just send me that email if you haven't already joined here or on Patreon. Now let's talk about self-defense techniques don't work. Episode number two, we're talking about the Kali martial arts stick, martial arts weapons. These are very popular. You see them, there's a brand new Disney movie out, a cartoon called Raya or Raya and the Last Dragon. And in the trailer for it, I haven't seen the movie, she's got a pair of these on the back, on her back. You see them, in a very, they're very popular. Uh, the Daredevil movie from years and years ago. He fought with Kali sticks. You see them all over the place. And if you're, and you might already be training with them. And you see this motion here. This is called Sinawali, and I'm kind of doing it sloppy, but here, I'll get it tighter. And this is the basic pattern all up here. I can also start to go lower. I can go high and low. You can add a little deflecting blocking motion. You can go high and low. You can do all these Sinawali patterns, and you see that over and over and over again. And in my mind, that's a lot like spinning with the bow staff or spinning the, the chucks, right? Doing all of the fancy stuff with the chucks. All of those are important moves in the style of martial art that you're practicing. And it's a way to condition the body, condition the hands, condition the heart and lungs. It's a way to disguise repetition. You can do it on a stack of tires. It's very popular. Banana bags work really well, especially the canvas kind. You start working your Or you see guys and they'll be doing it, guys and girls. And I don't have anybody to do it with or I'd show you how to do stick drills, both single and double with your partner. 
And people see that and they think, wow, that's very effective. It's very awesome. But it's a lot like Aikido in the respect that the other person, and if you've ever been a beginner in one of these classes or taught one of these classes to beginners, it's very frustrating if you know how to do the basic patterns and the other person doesn't. And they're, but then once you start getting really good at it, it's like playing tennis. It's like playing racquetball. It's like playing handball. Once you get a volley going back and forth, back and forth, table tennis, right? Ping pong. That's where all the fun is. It's when you hit it and they hit it back and then you hit it and they hit it back. Now you've got a game going and it's very fun. And there's the flaw. That's why self-defense techniques don't work martial arts weapons with Kali martial arts sticks when that's all you do. When all you do are these fun drills and you work up to get good at them and you learn six, seven, eight, nine levels or patterns of Sinawali and then you start to do what your guru does and you look the other way. Some of you guys, FMA guys know what I'm talking about. And, they're, and then they're doing one hand and they're looking away and acting like it doesn't affect them. Yeah, you're really good. It's like how good I am at spinning the bow staff. But I can't use that for self-defense. You can't use all of that for self-defense. Will it make you better self-defense? Absolutely. Will it give you a better grip? Thousand percent. Will it improve your cardiovascular fitness? Unquestionably. But is that all you need to do? No way. You need to understand the practicality of striking. And I'm gonna show you real quick, but then I wanna talk about footwork because this is also really important. I have some basic techniques. Now, when I'm doing Sinawali, I am practicing those basic techniques, but usually I'm doing it so that I can do a cool pattern with my partner, which is awesome, which is fine. If you also know that at some point, you might have to reach in and strike right in their face, not your partner, but the guy for self-defense, the thug, the bully. You need, when you talk about self-defense techniques don't work or self-defense techniques do work, you talk about principles of self-defense. Situational awareness, that's always the first, most important principle. If you can avoid the fight, avoid it, right? Anybody who's been in a fight or two or three or four understands that unless you're just a, a sick individual who has some mental issues, you avoid fights, right? It's like a, a hardened warrior doesn't pray for war. They still wanna go and test themselves, but once they've been in a few battles, they don't come back saying, man, I can't, they do. They wanna get back into the action, that's the adrenaline, but they understand when they see their you know, buddies die and they see they lose an arm, a leg, or an eye. You know, that uh, Dan Crenshaw, the uh, American congressman, he lost one eye and they had to operate, be blind for a month. They don't want to jump back into the, the war part. They like the adrenaline of the battle. That's the fun, right? They like the training. But you understand that there's so much luck involved and, and you don't know who you're going to fight. So you don't avoid or you don't go looking for the fight. So that's number one, situation awareness. Number two, ask yourself what target can you remove or destroy? We'll call that number three. That's number three. I jumped ahead of myself. Number two is getting a better position. One stick or two sticks. You train in the classroom, sit a wally on your stack of tires if you're alone or solo or with a partner, hitting their sticks. They hold like this and you go, and then you're going at the same time. And then you drop these and you get the machetes and you put the, I said this the other day, the uh, chemistry, ninth grade chemistry goggles on because the sparks are going to fly and everybody around you is going, ooh and ah, wow, that's exciting. And you realize at some point in the middle of all this, yeah, but what happens, what happens if my partner doesn't know how to do that? You know, and a machete, I mean, that's a, that's a deadly weapon. You know you, what you can do with that. That's simple. But let's the sticks, collie sticks. Is it an effective self-defense tool? Absolutely, 1,000%. And I want you to break it down to some basic moves. I'm going to show you those, but I have to talk about footwork. I have to talk about footwork because this is so popular, and I'm going to do my best impression, and it's not going to be, it's not going to be anywhere near what actually uh, a guru or a Kali Center master might do, but watch this. And when, and when I had my building, we had a big, big martial arts school, 12,000 square feet, two floors, five classrooms, climbing wall, all the good stuff, right? All the goodies, adult classes, kids classes, uh, classes for special needs, bring the teachers in, teach them how to talk to the kids. We did all that. But I also had Kali martial arts schools who never made much money and I get, let them work out for free upstairs at night because 
The kids weren't going to learn how to fight with knives. We wouldn't do that. And the, um, there are so few people who actually will spend the time to learn how to do it well. And they were amazing gurus. The guys that taught in the school, one was a student and the other one. And they were both really good, really effective. They were both students of Dan Inesanto himself and others. And they had great students with, with them. But the classes were, you know, two, three, four people at most. And every once in the first guy, he used to bring in a lot of law enforcement, special forces type people, or special forces operator type people. I know special forces green braids, but you know what I mean, operators. And, you know, it's deadly stuff if you understand that this, Sinawali, that's valuable, but that's just conditioning the body. That's not the, the self-defense part. And then the footwork. And I, I always think of like a... Uh, a dancing, fluttering sprite, and 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 not not in a, like I'm not picking on it or whatever, but the, the footwork can be super duper complex, and there's value in that. There's value in that footwork. It, what it does, it, it teaches you how to move in and move in, and, and it's all about the angles, right? You have angles forward and angles back, but just like everything else, like me and like everybody else, I'm gonna move the camera. You get focused on the wrong thing. You spend all your time mastering the spin or the nunchuck spins. Or in this case, with the martial arts or scream or knees, you're really good at the Sinawali. And especially, you find somebody who's good or you teach somebody to be your partner. And before you know it, you guys are spinning. You're going down on one knee. You're going down on your back. I do all of that, right? I can do all of that. I can teach you how to do all of that. We can give a demonstration to the public and they'll be ooh and on. Put on the ninth grade chemistry glasses, the goggles. We'll get the machetes out. The sparks will fly. And at the end of the day, if I never taught that guy how to take this stick and use that end, go right into the face, martial arts techniques, self-defense techniques won't work with this martial arts weapon. So let's go over that real quick before I... Before I get so excited about this topic that I lose my train of thought again. You have this stick, right? You, you're going to choke up on it because I'm only going to fight with one. You're going to choke up on it. You can fight with two, but think about this. You fight with one and you have to trap the other hand or strike or come in and grab and take hold of their hand. You know, that's got that knife in it or whatever. Pin it against their body. Come back out and strike. You're going to be able to do that. But you can have two, it doesn't matter. One or two, the principles are the same. Number one, pay attention, situation awareness. Number two, better position. Put the stick between you and the threat, especially if this threat has a knife. They have a knife, you have, yeah, we'll do, let's, let's light, do lightsaber this weekend. Um, the stick's not gonna bleed, right? They got a knife, they can slice it all they want. Stick doesn't bleed. Put the stick between you and the threat. The stick has the advantage of length. Now you're farther away from that hand with the knife. You're farther away from his fist, from his foot, from, his, from kicking. Let's say it's a vicious animal. A pit bull running around, been abused, hungry, two or three of them with him. The, the, the guy who fights him down the street got arrested and went to jail for also doing something else he wasn't supposed to. This happens. It happens all the time. I'm not making this stuff up. And now his dogs break the chain and they're running the neighborhood mauling people. And you happen to be out for a walk, but you just carry your stick with you. And I see people carry sticks like this and longer in my neighborhood with gated uh, entry. Everything down here is gated, right? Oh, good. Thanks, John. That should come through. Did you do that today? John said he left an email with, uh, with, with the school's email at uh, either quantumstrong.com or pasquinelli.com. They both have contact me boxes. You can do it either way. All right. So I've got this distance. There's that dog right to the snout, right to the nose for self-defense. The other thing with a pit bull and people ask me this all the time and someone made a, you made, you made a great suggestion. You said, why don't you learn me? Why don't I learn from some of the animal experts who train animals what to do in a vicious dog attack? And I thought that's so brilliant. That's why I didn't think about it. So I did, I did my study, I did my research, I watched a bunch of videos, I read a bunch of blog posts by Caesar Milan and others who train dogs, and they all say pretty much the same thing. If a vicious dog, 
And then you look up the, the statistics will say 80% of the time it's going to be a pit bull. A vicious dog is coming at you, stick something in its mouth. Give him something else to chew. So give him your stick if you want to, right? They're going to hold on to it so because now you know where his, his mouth is. And just keep it there until someone comes for assistance or until you can go the other way. Don't run. Don't run when a vicious dog, because they see you as prey and they're going to just latch onto you and then you're done or you're in big trouble. Stick something in its mouth, right? Don't run. If you have to strike, strike for the nose, just like you'd punch a shark. And that seems like an urban legend that you'd punch a shark in the nose. But that's what divers teach. That's what Navy SEALs teach. Punch them in the nose. Same thing. Anytime you can strike the nose or the eyes, push them in the eyes. But for the vicious dog, number one, don't run. Number two, don't stare in his eyes. Dogs like it when you go like this. That just gets them crazy and they want to rip something apart. So don't stare in his eyes, but stick something in his mouth. Give him something else. You know, dogs love to play catch. That's a real thing. Use that. But back to the strikes. I want you to think situation awareness, better position, thrust. And the reason I always want you to thrust is to immediately address the threat. Immediately, right into the face. Immediate direct explosive. That's a martial arts principle or a self-defense principle. Immediate, like now. Like you see the, the knife starts to come out now. They start to pull something else out now. They start to come at you now. Don't wait and try to deflect it. Don't try to block. Don't try to strike the hand with the knife. Go right into the face. After you hit them in the face, this is your first basic thrusting motion. Notice my other hand is always up. Then you can strike at that angle coming down or the other angle coming down. One or two. And think about the strikes. Think about the Sinawale again. This is why self-defense techniques don't work. Martial arts weapon, episode two. We're talking Kali martial arts because when you practice Sinawale exclusively, and you're only doing Sinawale, and then you're doing the drills with your partner, hitting sticks together, and then you're learning the intricate footwork and you're dancing, fancing, fancy dancing around. And again, nothing wrong with it, but don't stop there. Also practice following through with your strikes. Follow through with your strikes. Follow through with the concept in your head of pure devastation. What can you remove and destroy? Eyes, nose, mouth, ability to breathe, ability to see. Uh, right there, right lower. Well, good morning, Wilson. It's good to see you too. Talking college sticks today. Yeah, we're doing double sticks. We're talking about Cinewale is a good start. We're talking about footwork and all the fancy footwork drills. Great start. Partner drills, stick to stick. Even machete, machete. Great start. Don't stop there. Learn how to use it for self defense. Thrust, angular strike, angular strike, horizontal strikes, vertical strikes. And keep it simple. Keep it as simple as you basically can. Now, because this is one of my favorite weapons, I have to show you my favorite strike with the weapon. It's this part here, the little piece sticking out of the bottom. If you're holding it here, you might have more leverage because of length, but you give up one of the best strikes, which is just straight in. There we go, right in your face. From here, straight into the face. I can go straight in and then immediately go into another strike. And see what I do, I practice, I train myself, I visualize, I think face, top of the head. I think throat, nose. I think uh, solar plexus, arm or ribs. I think groin, face. And, and that, that's the, the next part of this self-defense concept. The principles of self-defense, situation awareness, better position, put the stick between you and the threat. Three, ask yourself with a breath. The breath centers you and you just need a little bit of breath. A little bit of oxygen gets in the brain. Everything calms down. Your focus goes up. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, what can I remove or destroy for self-defense? Eyesight, ability to see, ability to breathe temporarily or permanently, ability to grab, ability to stab, ability to punch. Am I going for uh, a wrist, an elbow, a joint, you know, one of the joints, a knee? Am I going down? Is it... That vicious dog, do I need to make a couple strikes or do I go right into his mouth? 
put the stick in his mouth, let him chew on the stick instead of your arm, instead of your body, instead of your neck. Don't run. Don't run from that vicious dog. They'll just chase and they know how to get that neck and take you down. So those are the questions you have to ask. After you ask yourself, what targets will I remove or destroy? Then you have to be committed. And the way I want you to train is think about what those targets are. And as you train slowly, now this is where you slow everything down. Train slowly and say out loud or out loud in your head, eyes, temple, temple, wrist, ribs, knee. And then, and always follow through. Striking, not striking and pushing, but striking and putting in your body. See how I'm turning my whole body? That's how you strike. That's an arm strike from here to here. That's weak. That's a power strike, your whole body. And then you, you can close the gap and you can say eyes. Now I'm using this part, eyes, throat, ribs. I can do temple on this side. You can also do it here. But as you're turning, your whole body's turning here. I was training a woman last night and we were using, yeah, flow like water, Bruce Lee. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, we were using the, it was your suggestion. You said, uh, that you carry a, uh, you can't carry anything at work, but in every room, every classroom, I assumed it was classroom, every office room, every classroom are dry erase boards and those dry erase markers. And let me get this real quick. It's just like that uh, Yawara or palm stick or the Kubaton, the keychain. And you said, you know, you struck with them and they're pretty indestructible. Now I'm not, <laughs> I have to go uh, work at the, little, at the little kid's school in a little bit. I don't have black ink all over me. Or I would show you um, how strong it is. I'm just gonna do a few strikes, but this is that same strike. That's why I love fighting with sticks. Learning how to fight with sticks, you learn how to. Here's another one. See this? Every FMA guy I know walks around like this. I mean, I do when I have the stick. Because that's what we teach, the guru taught me that, right? Gurus. All the gurus are standing like this, so we all stand like this. All the gurus stand like this, so we stand like this. All the gurus have that same flitting, fluttering light on their feet. It's funny, because like all martial arts have their own characteristics. Like everybody who does Aikido looks and talks like this. Not everybody, but for the most part. All the BJJ guys have a cauliflower ear. That's from the... Uh, grappling and because they won't wear a helmet in high school wrestling we wore the ear muffs the ear protectors so you didn't get the cauliflower ear even in, even when i did judo at a higher level not that i was at a higher level but i trained with higher level people a lot of those guys were wearing ear muffs because they wanted to go to work on monday without the cauliflower ear but if you're a dyed in the wool hardcore bjj guy you got the big cauliflower ear smashed nose um all taekwondo guys seem to act and talk a certain way too it's just characteristics of the style. I think it's because, you know, we, it, it's like you grow up, you're, you take a little bit of your mom, you're a little bit of your dad, and you have that same personality. Anyway, you're holding this here. This is just an off brand. This isn't the, the fancy brand, but you can strike. And now all of a sudden you concentrate all the force there in that part here and think of temple, eyes, other temple, right? Neck. Remember we talked about that and Tim Larkin, who wrote that great book. Uh, I, I suggest that any, anybody who's serious about self-defense needs to read Tim Larkin's book called When Violence is the Answer. And when you have time, go check out his channel here if you don't already follow it, Tim Larkin, gold standard of uh, self-defense that works. Self-defense techniques don't work unless you also follow Tim Larkin's principles that he, is, he and others have, uh, he's kind of the pioneer, but he and others have talked about this for a long time. They've identified these basic principles. Situational awareness. Better position. Actually, I don't know if better position is in there. That's, that might be one of my favorites. But uh, what targets can you remove or destroy, right? Uh, Tony Blauer, he has the flinch block. That's a better position. Targets, target acquisition. And then for me, I want you to train not with uh, punch, uh, knife hand, back fist. I want you to think eyes, temple, throat, teeth, solar plexus, groin, and you're doing it all with the dry erase marker, you, you happen to be 
working at your kid's school, all, all of a sudden there's an event, a situation where you need some self-defense and you need a little bit of a extra uh, power, a little bit more strength than you would normally have. You need to end it fast and this is all you got. It's better than nothing, right? Pick that up, put your thumb in it and when you think, think in terms of targeting. Now, back to this one, same thing. You have this strike, we have these strikes, and you have thrusting strikes. So keep it super simple. Self-defense techniques don't work unless you also train the self-defense techniques. How brilliant is that, right? Or not brilliant. But what I've seen so long, being in martial arts so long, is that people will get this a thin, shallow layer of knowledge and experience and understanding than they teach. And from that shin th or thin, shallow layer, this is what they loved in their beginner class or their intermediate class. And they did lots of this. And they even did um, takeaways where they learned how to strip the, the knife and the stick and the open hand and strip. And they learned how to do all the stripping, which is all important. It's all valuable. It's like <laughs> teaching somebody how to take a gun, the Krav Maga, right? The guy pulls out the gun and the Krav Maga guys are all... Um, but way before that, learn how to, before that guy pulls that, that gun out, bam, try to knock, knock him out so that he can't use the gun. Or so you don't have to try to take it away. Because yes, if you can control the muzzle, you can control the gun. That's true. But the chance, it's just, I'm laughing because it, most, uh, most times people get shot. It's not like, a, hey, put your hands up, give me all your money. Like we did, you know, we, we used to see in the cartoons in 1973. It's pop, 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 pop. Or pop, 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 and they're done. And they don't even, half the time they don't even see it. And, you know, boom, that's it. And so there's not a chance to do all that stuff. So it seems a little, scars, they're all from my, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's well known now because, and again, Tim Larkin's book, read that book, watch his, his podcast because he breaks it down. Watch his uh, vlogs here on YouTube. He'll show you what happens because they have all this video now. Everybody's got a camera. There are security cameras everywhere. Now we know what really happens, what we used to believe was going to happen before there were all these eyeballs everywhere is, is what we used to train in martial arts and call it self-defense. That's why I say self-defense is one thing. Martial arts is something completely different. Now, they have crossover techniques. They can have crossover um, principles even. But understand and train self-defense for self-defense. Train martial arts for sport, uh, mindfulness, um, holistic health, um, uh, exercise, fitness, better breathing control, better sleeping at night, leaner body, uh, fun, right? Uh, mind development. There's so many aspects of martial arts training, which makes all martial arts, even my least favorite, Favorites, for, for, I just, I'm, I'm, it's too slow for me. Um, they all have value, they have great value. And they all have self-defense techniques in them, but you have to take them out. Apply the principles of self-defense, the concepts of self-defense, and say, situation awareness, better position, target acquisition. And then you have to train away your hesitation. Train away your hesitation, you have to put yourself in, visualize, and go and slow it down. All right, this guy's the threat. I'm gonna put my hand right through his brain because that's the closest. I, I identified his nose as my target. And no, the nose is not gonna go into the brain and cause instant death. That's an urban legend, that's a myth. It doesn't work like that. However, does that mean you shouldn't strike the nose? What's gonna happen when you stick your palm, that five hard bones right there, that's a hard part of your hand, the hardest part, that goes right into there, smashing everything from you to them in that shortest distance possible, immediate direct explosive, right? What's going to happen? The nose bleeds, their eyes water, they lose vision temporarily, they, they get, start choking on their own, spitting their blood temporarily, they can't breathe. It changes the whole picture of the fight for them. In their mind, they were going to do this to that to you, and they're used to people cowering, and you put your hands to them, you said, back up, and then you realize you didn't have a choice, you're going to go first. And then you add a second one, and then you add an elbow, and then you add an elbow up, and then you have this fist, you got that uh, dry erase marker coming right into the eyes, and then you drive the knee into their knee, and then they're on the ground. Or you have to keep fighting, but practice self-defense and self-defense. 
practice martial arts is martial arts. And at some point, do it in the same workout. I always do it in the same workout. I love the bow staff. I'll spin that thing, spin that thing. That's my warm up. I'll do all the different spins. I'll do freestyle, see what I can learn new, what I can do that I haven't been able to done before, see how fast I can go. And then when I'm done, I'll get in a better position. I'll put myself behind the staff, point the staff at the threat, practice thrusting, striking, backhand strike, over the top, and keep it super simple. What works? What doesn't work? And if it doesn't work, don't practice it for self-defense. Practice it for fun. Now, I like to do this. I want you to do this when you train with weapons so you can make your hand more flexible. You gonna use this for self-defense? No. Will it help you be a better self-defense person? Yes, because now you're gonna have a stronger grip. You're gonna strike harder, faster. You're gonna have less injury when you train. So you're gonna be able to train harder, faster, better. All that is true. One last thing about this. This morning when I got in, I had all the names. It's actually in a database and then printed them out, cut them up, put them in the hat, pulled out a name, put, uh, did the shipping, everything. Gonna drop it off the post office in a little bit for the two piece bow staff. So I found a winner for that. I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't want people bothering them, but trust me, it's in the mail or it will be. This is the giveaway. This is that self-defense cane you can practice made out of rattan. I don't want to rip it up too much because it's still in the plastic. Hit hard with it, train with it. Send me an email if you want to be entered in the drawing. Go to pasquinelli.com, P-A-S-Q-U-I-N-I-L-L-I dot C-O-M. And in that contact box where it says contact me or join the newsletter or sign up for the newsletter, send me that. And then the little box where you can add extra words, write down your name, first and last, your address that you would have this shipped to, and a little note, hey, I'd love to win that self-defense cane. And I will be drawing this in a month, May 15th. We'll make that our tradition for right now until we figure out a better way to do it. Um, like I said, I get some of these in the mail sometimes for free from the companies. Sometimes you get extra ones. This is one, it's not an extra one, it's one I sell, but I thought you'd like to have it. So I'm gonna offer this up. I'm gonna pay for my own, I'll pay for the shipping and send it to you if I pull your name. If you're a member, either a paying member, you hit the join here. Thank you so much, I appreciate you. you. You support me on Patreon. I appreciate you either way. And you, you're you not able to send me any money. You have the, uh, you're a student, you're struggling. You uh, just don't have a lot of money anymore or never had, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Invest in watching and training with me. That makes me happy. Go to that pascalnoli.com and send me that message there and I'll put you in the drawing for this one. And then who knows, maybe next month, it'll be a set of college sticks, but we'll figure it out. We'll see what we get between now and then. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit.